Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rem Prep for Landlords. It's episode number 291. I'm your host, Eric Worrell. The year of 2019 is coming to a close. And what we're going to be talking about today is upstream indicators. We're going to be getting into what exactly that means and where you see these in terms of economics and also being a real estate investor. We're going to get back to that right after this. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your host, Eric Worrell. All right. So an economic indicator, an upstream indicator. What does that mean exactly? Well, upstream indicators can be in a variety of different areas. And you may or may not have heard this before, but basically these are the things that can predict what's going to happen in the future. So one of the first articles I ever read on this that kind of got me curious on the subject matter was talking about the Caterpillar brand. So you've seen these, you know, giant earth movers, backhoes and things like that, uh, the Caterpillar uh, trucks. And uh, the article is saying that these are a upstream indicator of economic um, stability in that when that brand takes a hit, right, their stock price is plummeting because they're not selling a lot of equipment. It's really upstream in the process of real estate. Because if you think about it, if you're uh, doing new development, uh, one of the things, one of the first things you're going to do is if there's a lot of new development going on, people are going to be buying these machines to, you know, move earth around. And uh, when they, these machines aren't selling, it's usually an indicator that there's not a lot of new development projects happening, which affects things like the economy and uh, at large uh, much further down the stream. So this is an upstream indicator. So I think it's pretty interesting because you can kind of identify these things and kind of have an idea of what to look for and kind of get a little bit of a sense of where things are headed. So I did a little bit of Googling for you and I found an article. It is by AAII.com. That's the American Association of Individual Investors and it gives the top 10 economic indicators, what to watch and why. Some of this I'm going to kind of breeze over because frankly it's freezes over my head. Um, and I don't want to, you know, sit here and talk about some topics and pretend like I'm educated on them when I'm really just spitting stuff back, but I will at least cover it. Uh, so I can show you how uneducated I am on some of these things. But, uh, number one, it talks about the real GDP gross domestic product. It says that this is important because the federal reserve uses data such as the real GDP and other related economic indicators to adjust its monetary policy. Number two, M2 or money supply. It does not include institutional money fund assets, large denominations over 100,000 uh, or any special reserve uh, banks are required to maintain. Why it's important. Uh, I'll be honest, that didn't make sense to me. So, so that the Federal Reserve uses this data to assess current economic and financial conditions to help alter its monetary policy, which includes raising and lowering interest rates, which if you're a real estate uh a real estate investor that's interesting to you. So um, we're going to skip ahead here. Uh, consumer price index, uh, CPI. CPI does not include every item an individual may buy, but instead takes a sampling of several hundred goods and services across 200 item categories. So the CPI, um, you can find housing on there. So if you're kind of, I, I know the standard for like uh, a lot of people use is maybe 3% or 5% that they increase their, um, their rent prices each year. The, uh, the Consumer Price Index, which um, it comes out from the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, they release the, um, the averages uh, monthly, yeah, during the second or third week. So you can look that up, you know, just CPI, Consumer Price Index, and it'll tell you, like, for the last month and the year what the actual change has been. So the housing may not have gone up at all or may have gone up, like, way more than 3%. So that's something you can look to, especially if you feel kind of guilty uh, for raising prices. This is something that's telling you, Hey, housing costs and are going up by this much. Like, it's not like a gut feeling thing. That's actually what it is. So here's one I haven't heard of producer price index PPI, uh, it tracks price changes in virtually all goods producing sectors, including agriculture, forestry, fisheries, mining, and manufacturing. The PPI also tracks price changes for a growing portion of non goods producing uh, sectors of the economy as new PPIs are introduced. So it says here the report measures prices for goods at three stages of production, finished goods, intermediate goods, and crude goods. 
So this was called the Wholesale Price Index from 1902 until 1978. So that probably explains why I hadn't heard of it, because they just changed the name in 1978. Uh, that was a bad joke. Uh, but it says that that's important because this index is timely because it's the first inflation measure available in the month. In addition, by watching crude prices, which are the first in the chain of production trends, one can sometimes spot inflation in the pipeline. All right. Consumer Confidence Survey. Uh, I'm going to skip the uh, definition of that because it's just basically 5,000 individuals uh, they ask questions on. It says that the statistic is a leading indicator of consumer spending, uh, and consumers are more inclined to spend money when they are feeling confident about their financial and employment prospects. Makes sense, right? Current employment statistics, you know, obviously that's uh, important. It says this earliest indicator of economic trends released each month. Employment rates indicate the well-being of the economy and labor force. Changes in wages point to earning trends and relate uh, related labor costs. Economists focus on the monthly change in total non-farm payrolls and in which sector jobs were gained or lost. All right. Uh, and I trust me, stay with me. We're going to get to some real estate ones here at the end. Uh, this one, retail, trade sales, and food service sales. Uh, so it's important because it measures personal consumption across retail industries and tracks growth or deceleration of personal consumption spending, which of course if people stop spending. It's probably because they're, they're a consumer. Uh, you know, confidence is low. Uh, people are worried about what's coming up ahead. People don't spend money. You know, people aren't investing. It hurts the economy. Yada yada. I'll pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Number eight, housing starts, formerly known as new residential construction. So we'll go over this one in some detail. Why it's important. Housing starts are highly sensitive to changes in mortgage rates, which are affected by changes in interest rates. Although this indicator is highly volatile, it represents about 4% of annual GDP and can signal changes in the economy and the effects of current financial conditions. Analysts and economists know to watch for longer term trends in housing starts. So this data comes from the U.S. Department of Commerce's U.S. Census Bureau and it releases the data monthly. So that's kind of interesting how much new housing is uh, uh, construction is happening. So maybe you could say an upstream indicator of that would be the Caterpillar sales, right? Uh, number nine, manufacturing and trade inventory and sales. It's important because it's the primary source of information of, on the state of business inventories and business sales. Inventory rates often provide clues about the growth of or growth or contraction of the economy. A growth in business inventories may mean sales are slow and the economy's rates, rate of growth is also slowing. If sales are slowing, businesses may be forced to cut production of goods. I don't know about you, but I read that and for some reason I'm just picturing a giant warehouse like in my mind and there's boxes all over it and it means that you know the manufacturing and trade inventories uh numbers are high and that's bad but i don't know why it's kind of interesting how your brain just starts to like fill in pictures that you know may or may, may not be accurate but number 10 you're familiar with s p 500 stock index top 500 uh, publicly traded companies um, it says that it's important because the index is designed to measure changes in stock prices of uh, component companies it used to be or it's used as a measure of the nation's stock of capital as well as a gauge of future business consumer confidence levels uh, it is also uh, important to note that short-term fluctuations are not really uh, considered by economists and they're really looking at uh, the 10 year total return, uh, which is a common indicator of longer term trends. So, you know, the stock market takes a plunge for a week. Like people really aren't looking at it as a leading indicator on anything. They're looking at a 10 year, probably rolling average and what the trend is on that. And to finish this episode off, you know, after we we're talking about some of that, cause I think that's interesting too. When you're going back to, uh, I think it was uh, number eight here on the housing starts where you're talking about changes in interest rates, um, which, uh, affect mortgage rates. So, you know, all, you can see how these different leading indicators are kind of connected because if I do a quick search on interest rates here, let's see, I get, yeah, the M2 money supply, uh, which includes raising and lowering interest rates. Um, so the M2 money supply that we mentioned affects interest rates. And then when you look at the housing starts, um, it says that interest rates affect mortgage rates. And then mortgage rates affect housing starts, 
which also affects the economy and the GDP. So you can see how it's this trickle down effect where if the money supply numbers are off and the interest rates start to rise due to that, then your mortgage rates rise and then your uh, new construction uh, is decreased and uh, you know maybe even uh, sales are, uh, of course, when mortgage rates go up, you know, you're not gonna sell as many homes because people don't you know, wanna borrow on crazy mortgage terms. Uh, and then all that affects the GDP as well. So it's uh, the economy is very hard to understand, and I don't claim to understand it, but it is interesting seeing how all these things kind of run in parallel. But one thing I do understand are upstream indicators of being a landlord. So what I mean by that are, what are some of the things that you can spot in a tenant that you know, may be upstream in the fact that they are not a tenant yet. They may be somebody who is applying to your rental property. So what are those little things that you may spot that might be an indicator to say, you know what, this person might be problematic. I know I've covered these in the past, but it's always worth repeating that uh, one of the things you can do is run a background check. Obviously, rent prep, we run background checks. That's why we exist. Um, if somebody's not willing to run a background check, um, or, or submit to one, uh, that might be a good upstream indicator that they have something that they're trying to hide. So putting that in your marketing um, that you run a background check will immediately weed out a lot of um, applicants who might not be a good fit for your particular situation. Another upstream indicator is we do something called the no blank space policy. That means you have a, a um, rental application somebody fills out, require that they fill out every piece of the rental application. They may say they don't remember like their previous landlord's information or something like that. Well, tell them, I'm sorry, I can't accept this. Uh, when they do that, uh, there's a, uh, a decreased uh, confidence that I would have in that person uh, when they can't give you all the details because there might be a reason that they can't give you all the details. Another upstream indicator is they put the wrong information on the rental application. So it could just be an honest mistake or typo but if you're running it, uh, a background check and that social security number doesn't match with that person, um, that is a form of intentional fraud that some people do because they know that they might have uh, some history. So what they do is they just provide fake uh, data and uh, maybe throw uh, their social security off by one number, hoping you're not actually gonna run anything. And that is an upstream indicator potentially that either they just have poor attention to detail or that they might be trying to hide something. And then, as far as attention to detail, I think there's a bunch of upstream indicators you can look at when you're doing a showing. Um, how much you know stock you want to put into it is up to you, but sometimes the um, the accumulation of all those things together might tell you a little bit of a, a story on the person that you're about to run to. And what I mean by that is, let's say they show up nine minutes late to the time that they are supposed to look at the property then they have mud all over their shoes and they drag it through the house un unknowingly, right? They didn't even notice that they were just putting uh, muddy footprints through. Uh, as you're looking at the house, they're asking you questions like, uh, oh, do, uh, does that, uh, what's your policy on uh, fire extinguishers? Or <laughs> can I, uh, uh, is it okay if I grow uh, plants inside of the house uh, in the closet? You know, these are kind of some ridiculous examples, but, um, you know, I, I have had actually somebody who looked at a property and he was 100% hungover, if not drunk, from the night before. He told me that he worked at a bar and um, I'm pretty sure he was still drunk. And he kept on asking me about like if he can plant all these plants and uh, what my policy was on that. And, you know, I just got the feeling he was just going to like plant, you know, marijuana, which whatever your stance is on that, whatever. But for me, I was like, I don't want to deal with that. And I mean, this is also going back like nine years. So we're way more offensive back then, too. But, you know, you get those little questions or maybe they're like nitpicking stuff. That's an upstream indicator, right? They're they're They're, they're looking at like a knob that's like, a little loose on one drawer and going, hmm, uh, maybe we could get this fixed. If somebody's nitpicking the property as they're looking at it, um, it, it's in my opinion, it's very different as a renter looking at a property than it is looking at a used car. If you're looking at a used car, you wanna point out everything wrong with it because you're trying to get the price lower. If you're looking at an apartment, you just have to decide, is this a good fit for you based on the budget, location, and the condition of the property? You're not going to sit there and haggle with a landlord and say, hmm, look at this, look at that. You know, I, I don't know about this. Of course, if there's some major things like, you know, you're, you're, you just moved in and like, you know, the sink's not working or stuff like that. But 
Uh, I do get uh, feedback from people saying that, you know, they've dealt with nitpicky um, tenants through the beginning process. And then once they placed them in, it just got even worse. Uh, so all stuff to consider. And then of course, you know, you walk them back out and you walk them to the car in some situations, if you can, uh, their car is a good indicator of how they're going to treat your rental property. That's an upstream indicator. If that car is a mess, like it is absolutely destroyed, you know, they own that car. That's how they treat the, the, the things they own. Granted, we all have, you know, our times when things get out of control. I just had to clean my car out the other day. I, I get these, uh, adorable, little drawings from daycare and all they are is just these like scribbles <laughs> and they keep them. Then we got to take them home. And at first I was like, Oh, that's so cute. I'm going to keep this. And now I get like scribbles like every day and I'm like, okay, now it's trash. But <laughs> they were like sitting in the, in the back seat on the floor there. And I was like, all right, I got to clean my car out a little bit. It's full of child propaganda. That's what I call propaganda too is uh, these daycares, there's a lot of propaganda there. Like they, we get these app updates and they, they say that my kid's uh, working on his fine motor skills. And it's a picture of him carrying a pumpkin. I'm like, I don't know. I think he's just picked up a pumpkin and you took a picture of him and you said it's fine motor skills. Or <laughs> The one is like, he's learning Tai Chi and he, put, he has his hand up like he's telling somebody to stop at a stop sign or something. And I'm like, uh, Tai Chi might be a stretch. He's two, but you know, uh, I just think it's funny the little spin you put on things. But Anyways, I'm getting off track. But uh, yeah, upstream indicators I think are interesting in the economy. Uh, also, when you're interviewing somebody to be a resident at your property, uh, there, think of those little upstream indicators. And maybe it's a situation like we were just talking about earlier where there might be something that leads to something that leads to something that really gives a red flag. And an example of that, like we were talking about before, how interest rates lead to mortgage rates, which lead to housing stars, which lead to effects on GDP. Well, somebody fills out a rental application and they don't provide their social security number. Then after some cajoling, you get it out of them. But then when you run it, it, it didn't match anything. So maybe it was the wrong uh, social security number. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, here's this, you know. And then you, they end up somehow getting into the property and then you have this issue and you realize that they gave you some fake information for their background check, which happens and is absolutely happening more and more. And you have these situations where these leading upstream indicators and then you get this person in. And as we talked about in the past, as soon as you give that person the keys and they signed on the dotted line and handed you that check for first month's rent, they're in. You know, if they've been in for five minutes, like you're going to be going through an eviction process if this person's a nightmare tenant, you know. So you want to make sure that you're aware of those things. You're looking at those leading indicators and making sure those upstream indicators are, um, you know, being considered and thought of. So I'm, uh, I feel like I'm starting to ramble. I apologize for that. And I appreciate you for staying on, listening. And uh, guys, I think next time I'll be talking with you, it'll be the new year and a new you, a new me. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and until next week and next year, have a great year. Take care. Uh-huh.